फ्लेक्सीबल कन्वर्जेंट रैंडम कोड स्विचिंग नाउ वॉट इज फ्लेक्सीबल कन्वर्जेंट रैंडम कोड स्विचिंग कोड स्विचिंग एज वी नो इज द ऑल्टरनेट यूज ऑफ वन लैंग्वेज एंड देन स्विचिंग बैक एंड फोर्थ फ्रॉम वन लैंग्वेज टू दी अदर आइदर विद इन अ सेंटेंस और बिटवीन सेंटेंसेज using different type of vocabulary so sort of constantly borrowing words this is called random code switching now random code switching as a term denotes also means that when they are when this alternate switch between languages is being made neither the learners are actually aware of it nor are the teachers actually aware of it that is they don't know the purpose why they are using it they are also not very aware at the given time and that when have they code switched and they are not only they have not even planned why they would code switch or what would be the benefit if they would code switch and what would be the benefit if they would not code switch at a given time so think of your own code switching for instance several times when we are talking to different people in real life situations this is exactly what happens in bilingual situations use code switch so much that you don't even realize that you have stopped using one language and you've started or shifted into another language we don't even realize that we have actually used so many words in so called for instance our use of urdu when we are talking to somebody or in our use of punjabi when we are talking to someone or sindhi or balochi or whatever so this is random code switching now it is very natural that in a classroom which is a microcosm of the wider society that these practices would find their way into the classrooms especially when the teachers are not trained to use languages effectively so what happens is that there is um a uh, use of language as it is used in uh, in the wider socio cultural context but whether it is useful academically or not we will discuss it in a while what we want to talk about over here is that this random code switching is actually like style switching also for uh, the monolinguals Uh, what we mean over here is that when monolinguals talk to different speakers in different contexts they change their style in terms of formal informal slang language or a specific you know a very um, academic code or an abstract code linguistic code we are talking about at this point they might do it so for us for bilinguals who have this huge repertoire of language so what we do is since we have this access to more than one linguistic code we shuffle through our the different linguistic codes to say what we want to in a way that we might think is more appropriate or more clear to the speaker that we are talking to or or it is more appropriate to the context within which we are using a word for us it is yes formal and informal but it is also switching between those codes to adopt a certain kind of style so it happens naturally because we just have more access to different types of codes now code switching as i said can be of different uh, reasons it can be subconscious because you want to have a very clear communication with someone and you have an idea of what concept of what type of language that might be more accessible to that person it might be deliberate because you want to engage the students or you want to sort of like develop a certain kind of rapport for instance coming to think of it in meetings if you would um, recall uh, which starts in the official language after the meeting and when you want to break the monotony of the meeting you crack a joke in urdu or in punjabi or in a sindhi language or in your balochi or the vernacular that you share with your team so this is when you want to change the style 
Now, code switching in education, when we are talking about that, we are talking about unplanned code switching. So you have no idea when did you, during the lecture, actually code switched. And the students also have very little idea, and the effect might not be as potential, potentially useful as we might like to think. And this is because when you explain an English language text, for instance, in, uh, if we talk about Pakistan in a vernacular or in another language, if the child has to take the exam in that, uh, in that language, this majority language, then the child might not be able to know how to translate his or her thoughts into this majority language to express that scientific concept that the person wants to. So if you have planned it, then that would mean you would know that yes, you will explain it a little bit in a vernacular, but then you will also go back to explain the same thing in the majority language. So when you do this letter thing, then you're shifting away from random code switching. That will become a different type of code switching, which we'll talk about later. This type is often used in transitional bilingual programs where you want the children to shift towards one majority language.